Hey, my baby loves. It's your girl, the evolution of the <laughs> So this is going to be the second video of the um the healing process series. Um so like I'ma try to keep this as lighthearted as possible, but some of these stories you just can't do that. Like when you're reflecting on your life, you just can't do that. Um so bear with me. If I get emotional, it's okay. If you get emotional watching me, that's okay too. Um, because this we're here to do. We're here to process things, we're here to get through them together so you guys just stick with me you know and i promise it'll be worth it in the end all right so the first um actual official video um is going to be um of me talking about my dad and like i said just to reiterate on my last videos just to reiterate from my um last video like i said um this is from my perspective this these are my feelings um this is what i feel um and i honestly don't feel like anyone can try to argue with me when it comes to what i feel um my plans my intentions are not to blast anybody or hurt anybody's feelings my plans are just to um get over this the best way i know how um and so with that being said let's get into this video um I just want to start off by saying I love my dad dearly. Um, that's my heart. The older I get, um, the more I realize that I have um, some of his aspects, some of his characteristics. Um, it's crazy. Um, that's just my dad, you know. Um, we don't have the perfect relationship, and that's okay. I hope that um, as I begin to, you know, go through this healing process that... Um, we can, you know, work towards a better relationship as well. Um, but right now, my main focus is to um, do what I can for myself, you know, um, heal myself. So that way that when we actually do have a conversation that I can go into it with a clear head, um, with an open mind and realizing that everything that happens happens for a reason. And there's a lesson uh, from everything. Um, so, with that being said, I'm just going to get into this story. And so, um, I had this piece of paper. And I'm going to do this with each and every one of these. I ain't going to put it too close just in case I write a personal name or something like that down. Um, I don't want y'all to see this. So, I'm not going to zoom in on it. I'm not going to make it focus. None of that. You know, well, it's a camera. So okay? I mean, it's my phone, so it really ain't going to focus. Anyway, but, um, and basically what it is, it'll have, like, agenda at the top. And it'll be like, well, it have, like, the the title or for my per for purposes for me it'll have like the title the name of whatever um video this is um and the agenda will be explaining you know what the agenda is of the uh, particular um video or topic and then at the bottom it has like notes um so that i can write you know some things that i may feel, i feel like i need to jot down or remember as i'm telling this story to help me um heal and so that's how we'll go through the process um and i'll try um well this is a reflection not so much a reflection but i'll try to um make sure that i include some type of lesson um as i'm talking um okay so anyway all right so um like I said, as I am editing this video, I realized that I did a lot of stopping and pausing. So, y'all just bear with me. I'm sorry about that. All right. So, um, I remember when I was younger, I had both of my parents. Now, um, and you know, it was happy. Um, like I said, I'm the last child and my brother and my sister got to see, you know, my parents together, um, you know, for a period of time when they were younger, you know. Um, so, you know, that was that was good. Me as a child, me as a baby, I got to have both of my parents. Um, 
a lot of video, a lot of pictures and stuff with my dad, you know, because he was around. Um, when I turned about, whew, when I turned about one and a half, my dad's dad passed away. Um, he had heart issues, um, and he ended up going into the hospital, and he didn't come back out alive. Um, and so a lot of people tell me that when that happened, it did something to my dad. And I can see how it could because, you know, that's losing a parent. And, you know, I can only imagine how I would feel losing one of my parents, you know. So I understand it being hard or whatever. Um, but I guess it was like he just could never get it together, if that makes sense. Um, and that's okay, you know. No one tells you when to be okay and when to just get over. Who just gets over, you know, losing a parent? Like, it's hard. You learn to live without them, but, you know, you still have that piece of your heart missing. So, I won't sit here and judge my dad and be like, oh, well, you should have got over it. None of that. Like, we all handle things differently. Um, and that's just the truth, you know. We're different. And sometimes we handle stuff ways in ways that we shouldn't or we fumble it, you know, and it's okay. It's okay because until you take your last breath, you still have a chance to, to make up for those things. I mean, so like I said, um, for my earlier childhood, I had both my parents. Um, like I said, I turned about one and a half and my dad's dad ended up passing away. And... Apparently, he wasn't really the same after that. Um, you know. <sighs> and I can't blame him for that, you know. But um, maybe around the age of me turning four or five, he ended up leaving. Like, I can't tell you what happened because I was young. Um. I only remember so much, um, but I do remember that he was there when I was younger and then, well, you know, earlier ages and then he was gone, you know. Um, and my dad is from Chicago, um, so he had gone back to Chicago. And of course, um, if you watch my Get to Know Me video, then you know that um, I'm from Columbus and Columbus, Mississippi, and Chicago, Illinois is about, I want to say, 12 hours um, away from each other. And so I didn't have my dad. And at the time, my grandma, my dad's mom, was still in Chicago. Um, and so I remember, like, when I was younger, you know, just her coming home. Um, and I, I, I seriously love my, my dad's mom. I really do. Um, she means the world to me. Um, and so, yeah, I remember her coming home when I was younger. And she would always have some kind of gifts and some kind of treats for me. And I remember me being young, and she would always bring home the popcorn, you know, the good popcorn that they have in Chicago. And I remember the couple of times that I did, you know, get to go to Chicago when I was younger and just seeing how beautiful it was in wintertime. Like, that's something that I think about now, and I'm just like, I got to go back, you know, in the wintertime because it's, it's so beautiful. You know, everything is lit up. Around Christmas, the lights, the snow, it's just beautiful. Um, you know, my I have family there, you know. And I don't get to talk to them like that, you know. And I'm older now, so it's kind of my fault. And I mean, I'm getting off subject with, you know, just something lighthearted, you know, to switch gears a little bit. But, you know, just going back, like I said, my dad, he ended up moving back to Chicago. And I remember um, I was young. Like I said, I remember one day. I think I was watching like Hey Arnold or something like that and I can like picture myself now um, because at the time my mom had taken a picture of me but she didn't know that I was crying. Um, I had this, this Scooby-Doo stuffed animal and I was in my bed and I was watching TV and I was holding onto the animal and my leg was like cocked up on the bed so like the um part where you walk into my door um my leg was cocked up you know on that side and i was like kind of facing towards the window so it, you know i was leaning like that the tv was right there and i can remember just thinking just holding on to my you know 
stuffed animal and being like, I just miss my dad. I miss my dad. I wish my dad was here. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I was just like, you know, I miss my dad. I miss my dad. Um, he ended up coming back. I think I want to say I ended up turning 10 and it was kind of a, a crazy um, birthday for me that, that year um, because my grandma's, um, her dad um, ended up passing away the week of my birthday and they ended up having his funeral on my birthday and that's one reason I remember this birthday and but like I said um he ended up passing away that week and they ended up having his funeral on that birthday uh, on on my actual birthday and I remember just like um that week at elementary school and I was just in the counselor's office because I was kind of sad I wasn't crying but I was kind of sad because I was just like you know I had met him a couple of times but of course I really didn't have a relationship with him because he was older you know and so sometimes when people get older they get a little feeble they aren't able to just have those you know communications um but I kind of remember and this was like this was my mom's mom's dad and you know I remember um my mom's mom's my mom's mom being kind of um sad or whatnot and like I said I was in the um counselor's office and I remember her Miss Elmore uh, she used to love Elmo and I was just telling her about it and I was just like yeah they're burying my great granddaddy on my birthday you know that's one way to to celebrate <laughs> your birthday being a great grandparent you know and i remember i didn't go to the funeral um probably because my mom doesn't like funerals and it was my birthday and she just didn't want to put me in that um atmosphere on my birthday um and i honestly didn't think i was going to do anything for my birthday that year um i wasn't i don't remember being really hurt by it um I was just kind of, you know, like, yeah, you know, it is what it is. As best as a child can say, it is what it is. But, um, and I remember being at my grandma's house, and I had got there, and there was like this U-Haul truck outside, and so... I was like, it wasn't like, okay, so my grandma, she used to stay in this house, and they used to stay, like, by a ditch. Um, and the ditch, you know, and it was like a, a big ditch. Like, you fall up in there. Like, they used to say, like, water moccasins and stuff was in there or whatever. But you fall up in there, you somebody got to come get you. I remember when it used to rain, and that thing used to get high. But anyway, so, like, the ditch is right here, and the house is right here. And so the U-Haul truck was, like, in front of the, like, on the side of the ditch, I guess, like, if that makes sense. Like, on the road, because, of course, the ditch went under the road. And so, like, the U-Haul truck was, like, right in front of where the ditch was. It's kind of, like, between my grandma's house and her neighbor's house. Um, and I remember asking my, my grandma, my auntie, one, and I was just like, um, who's is that, you know, or whatever. Um, and they was just like made up some kind of story <laughs> or whatever and so um my birthday comes and i'm at my grandma's house and um i remember like laying on the floor i was watching tv or something maybe i was watching like a dvd for hip-hop here i don't remember um but my god brother and my other cousin they called the house and they were like hey you want to go skate zone for your birthday um skate zone is like a, it's a it is a skating rink um, and so, like, I was like, yeah, okay, or whatever. And so, you know, the time came for us to get ready to go to a uh, skate zone. And I put on clothes. And me still, you know, just going with the flow. It was kind of like a real, you know, I don't even know the words to describe it kind of day. Um, and I get there and, like, all my family is there. My cousins are there. My mom is there, you know. And 
let me tell y'all something. Look, having a birthday party at Gay Zone used to be the thing, okay? So, you... And I was shocked when I say y'all. I honestly did not think I was gonna do anything special for my birthday. I wasn't expecting no birthday party, no nothing. And lo and behold, <laughs> my daddy was there, and that could have been one of the best birthday gifts I could have ever gotten because I missed him so much, y'all. Just sitting here thinking about being a little girl. <laughs> And not being able to have my dad as close as I wanted to, it meant a lot. It did. It meant a lot. Because like I said, it was already uh, an off day. Wasn't expecting much, you know. But hey, um, he was here. And it was all that mattered. And everything else just seemed to melt away. Um... Because my daddy was back. But, um, being young, you know, I expected when he came back for it to be like it was when I was younger. And, you know, um, I could barely remember how I was when I was younger, you know. And, like, the only thing I had to really compare it to was, um, the times that we would visit, um, you know, before my grandma had finally moved back to Columbus. And how my mom, him and my mom seemed to get along then, you know. Because I remember one time we ended up going up there, I think because my mom had to get a, um, some kind of medical work done. And so she ended up doing it there. And um, I got to see him then. And it just kind of, you know, gave me that feeling of just having my mom and my dad and having a normal family. Um, but like I said, when I saw him, um, I was so happy. I really was. Um, because my daddy was home, you know. So when he got back. You know, it wasn't the same as what I remember. Um, a lot of times, um, he'd be there. And I'm trying to explain this the best way as I could. Um, he'd be, we'd be in the same house. But a lot of times, if my grandma was going somewhere, I was behind my grandma. Um, my daddy would come get me from my grandma's house on the, my um, mom's mom's house on the weekend. But... Uh, when I got to the house, I was with my grandma. <laughs> um, and, yeah, we did have our moments. We did have um, our times. But it was just like, I don't know. It was like he was there. But I remember a couple of times, actually, um, him and my mom got into it. Oh, and they used to argue bad. Um when they actually did argue. Anyway, I'll say that. Not to say that they argued so much, but when they did argue, they would go at it. Um, because both of my parents secretly have some tempers on them. And so, like, when you push that button, you push that button. And so, um, I remember one particular day, um, I don't know if my mama was picking me up or dropping me off or something and her and my dad ended up getting into it and by this time I was in the house um and I could hear them arguing and my grandma had gone outside to try to break it up and I just remember going outside and like just hearing them argue and call each other everything you could think of <laughs> And I remember getting between them and my grandma just being like, stop, your child is between you guys and you guys are arguing. And I was so hurt. 
because no child wants to see their parents argue like that. No child wants to have to go through that at all. No child should have to go through that. But we all have to learn things on our own. Nobody's perfect, and so I can't be mad at them for arguing the way they did because I don't know what happened between them and their relationship. I don't know what went wrong. You know, you could tell both of them were just hurt. But me being a child, that wasn't my burden to carry. Um, and I shouldn't have had to see it. No child should have to see that. No child should have to put up with that. But somehow, some way, um, let's stop arguing. All right, so just to clear things up, not only should I have not had to see it, but no child should have to see that. So, parents, please do not argue in front of your kids because it affects them in the long run. I believe the times when me and my dad, um, when I felt the most connection were the times when I was crying, um, because who wants to see their child cry? And as I get older, I remember when I went through my very first actual breakup. Um, and I've only had two actual boyfriends um, or whatever. The rest of the guys, we were just talking. So um, I remember when I went through my breakup with my first boyfriend. And I don't remember how, why, or what was going on. Um, but my daddy found out. Um, and the first thing he did was came to me. And you could tell that he couldn't even be hurt. I mean, mad. He couldn't be mad because he saw, he saw how hurt I was. And so, um, He looked at me and he said, the only thing he could say was he was sorry. And that it hurts when people hurt you because we love so hard. And so when they hurt you, it hurts. And all I could do was cry. And I could tell that he was crying. And that was one of the moments when I was actually older, not me having to reflect back, but me being actually old enough to understand um, on my own that we were more alike than I realized. Um, I realized that I get my love and heart from somewhere. Um, and it's him, you know, and my dad, my dad, he crazy now. <laughs> My daddy is crazy. Like, the man will turn up. He'll turn from little look. From 2 to 10. And 2.5, so. But just to see him being vulnerable like that and just to see him, you know, cry because he could feel the hurt that I was going through. Um, it was like a true emotional connection for me. Um, and just to see him not get angry and not be, you know, um, or none of that, <laughs> and just to be there for me, that meant so much, especially in time like that. Like I said, that was my first heartbreak, first breakup, and it wasn't the first time I had been heartbroken, but it was my first breakup. Um, just to see him be there for me the way that he was, it meant a lot. Um, it really did. Just to talk about our relationship now, um, it's kind of estranged in a way. Um, 
We don't really talk like that. You know, when I go home, I go see him. I remember um, when I turned 21, um, my feelings were kind of hurt because he didn't call me for my birthday. And it was a big birthday. I was turning 21, and I didn't hear from him. And so that was 2018. And so I guess my feelings was kind of hurting away, and so I didn't call him for his birthday because his birthday is in December. Um, But I'm pretty sure that I ain't do nothing but hurt his feelings the way my feelings was hurt. <sighs> but um, when I see him, I hug him. Um, he knows that I love him. I mean, one time he told me, he said, you're still my baby. And that means a lot. Um, but you can just tell, like, it's almost like, I don't know how to go about it. Um, but understanding that eventually we're going to have to have a conversation, sit down, and to, to work out the kinks of our relationship because... It could be way better than what it is. Um, um, Cause like I said, and I don't, I don't really go home often. Is the thing like, so I'll see him when I go home. Sometimes, and I don't go home very often because a lot of times I'm working. Um, so there's that. Um, Lately, I haven't really even been calling my grandma because I was going through so much and trying to hide it. So, I really don't talk to him like that. Um, last year, we were planning a surprise birthday party for my grandma. And I think that might have been um, the most that I talked to him because, of course, I couldn't talk to my grandma. Um, between him and my papa, trying to to work things out over her head and go on them behind her and it was it was it was a nice birthday party she really enjoyed herself um that's a different story for a different day but um yeah so um i think that was the most i talked to my dad during that time which was my grandma's birthday is in march so it's been almost a year um Yeah. So, right now, I'm just an old Jesus. Ew. Like I said, we don't really talk like that. And it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, I don't know, like, like, you know, like we playing a game of, I don't know, like back and forth or something. Um, Cause he probably don't really know what to say or how to pick my brain, you know, and I'm dealing with a lot of hurt, you know, just feeling like, I guess kind of abandoned in a way without even realizing it, like, that was how I felt when I was younger, um, like he just left me. Um, and of course I knew he was leaving, but that don't mean it made it any easier for me. Um, like I said, I always love my dad. Um, it's just that I feel like during that period, um, is when A lot of issues set in, if that makes sense, um, without me even really know, no, noticing it or um, knowing why. Um, because in the absence of my my dad, like when my dad it was in Chicago, all I had was my uncle, my mom's baby brother, and my brother. Um, and of course, I had to when my dad was here, but they left too. 
And so, um, all I had was my granddaddy. And it kind of felt like the men that were closest to me, um, left. Um, like the men in my life were abandoning me. Um, And the only real male figure I had was my granddaddy. Um, it really, it really messed me up in a way, cause, you know, of course they had to leave for their own reasons. Um, and maybe had my dad stayed, it would have been a little bit easier. But like I said, these were the men. Who helped raise me? These were the men that I remember. Um, in my younger days, and all of a sudden they were gone. Um, and I didn't have what I had when I was a child, or when I was a baby anymore. Um, they weren't around like that. Yeah, I guess that's it for that story. Um, I'm sorry for crying. You know, you just think back on old stuff and old feelings, and um, it really provokes something. And so, yeah, um, I guess I forgot to write my notes too, but um, for the most part, um, I just feel abandoned. If you, if you are out there, um, and if you are out there and you um, felt something similar, um, and you felt something, um, or you've been through something similar, or you felt the same kind of way. So if you are someone who has dealt with that word, um, you feel that pain, um, you connect with this story. Um, I have uh, two verses for you, and I'm pretty sure the first verse will come up more than once um, because it is a verse that I have gotten a little familiar with. Um, so the first verse is, um, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed souls. And that's um, Psalms. 34, 18. And then the second one is Deuteronomy um, 31, 6. And it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Um, and I know that's hard. Um, it's hard to think about sometimes. But, um, or to just be okay with. That's understandable um, because we're humans. We um, crave attention from others. Um, as babies, we come out craving the attention of um, our parents. So if you, you know, were in a split home, um, it can mess you up. Um, in ways that you, you don't realize until you get older. But we have to remember that um, in those times, and of course you can't correct it when you're young because you don't barely know what abandoned means, you know. And so, um, but now that you're older, you know, you can understand it now. And basically what I'm trying to say is like, we have to pray that God, um, unroots that abandoned feeling from us <coughs> that we acquired as children or that we are, you know, acquiring now because of things that we're going through. We have to uproot it and um, we have to take it and replace it with something that is good. Um, so I'm going to take that feeling of, a, of being abandoned or feeling left behind and we're going to take it and we're going to um, replace it with love. 
we're going to replace it with knowing that God doesn't leave us alone. We're going to replace it with um, God making us worthy because, you know, sometimes we've been abandoned that we feel unworthy. And so we're going to replace it with worthiness, you know, feeling that we're worthy, um, knowing that God wants us, um, even if we feel that no one else wants us. And I'm pretty sure that's not true, but we have to take that and we have to shift that. Um, those thoughts in our head and so um, I just pray that as you are watching this that you begin to reflect over yourself and that you begin to open yourself up to God and you ask him to take those feelings uh, or that feeling of being abandoned um, take that hurt and begin to show you how to fill it with love um, Anytime you feel like your self-esteem is getting low um, because you feel unworthy, that you um, speak life into yourself and you tell yourself that you are worthy, that you are loved, and that God is always with you. You're worthy, you're loved, and that God is always with you. And so every time that feeling comes up, that's what you tell yourself. You're worthy, you're loved, and God is always with you. I'm worthy, I'm loved. And God is always with me. Um, and as you begin to tell yourself that over and over again, tell yourself that over and over and over again, um, I need you to one, say it out loud. If you need to, write it down. Um, write it on your mirror. Write it in your car or wherever. Put a sticky note, sticky note up until you are able to um, not just say it to yourself, but that you begin to believe that because it is true. Um, that you begin to believe that and that you begin to um, allow him to heal your broken heart. Allow him to um, have full access in that range so that um, you are able to um, be healed from that. That it no longer has power over you. And so that is what I um, pray over you. That is my task that I give you. That you tell yourself every time you feel those feelings. Um the things that are attached to being abandoned, the low self-esteem that you may have, um, because at one point in time I did have low self-esteem, um, the 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 feeling like you're not worthy because, like I just told y'all, I felt like I wasn't worthy because not only did my dad leave, but my brother and my uncle, they were gone too. And like I said, you know, of course, that they had to go on, but in my head, I thought it was something wrong with me. Um, and so you have to tell yourself that you are worthy, you know, and that God is always with me. You know, he might not be human form, and that's okay. He sends people to us when we need it the most, but we have to get comfortable with just being in his presence. Um, it's okay to just be with him, just have time with him, and to let him love on you in a way that no one else can. So, yeah. And that you tell yourself that I love me. Um, and I had to learn to love myself at a young age. I really did. Because if I didn't, then I would be torn down easily. But you know what? That's a different story for a different day. <laughs> um, so, yes. Um, that's my task for you. Tell yourself repeatedly that I'm loved. I'm, I'm worthy, I'm loved, and God is always with me. Because he is. You are loved. Speak life into yourself. Do something today. Um, reflect over yourself and tell your things. And write down things that you like about yourself. Today is not a day to be negative. Um, don't write down the aspects that you don't like. Um, write down what you like about yourself. Um, look in the mirror and tell yourself that you are beautiful. Um... And just really know that deep down in your heart. Um, begin to to realize who you are um, in Christ, in yourself. Um, and just get to know you. Fall in love with you. Fall in love with God at the same time. And I'm pretty sure if you're falling in love with him, he'll show you things about yourself that you'll fall in love with. Um, but you have to be open. Um, you have to be willing. You know, you have to be honest with yourself in order to get better. And so, 
I hope you guys um learned something from this story time. Um and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Um like, comment, subscribe, um, share with somebody who's going through this. Um share this series with somebody who's um going through something like you know, something heavy, you know. We all need healing. So share this with somebody. Um share with yourself. Um and just like I said get ready for the next video um continue to ponder all of those things that i uh listed in the very first video um and yeah um i hope you guys can take something from this um i hope you guys can begin to process those things so that you may heal um and i'm gonna let you guys go because this video has gotten way too long for me to be you know a fresh youtuber but that's okay it is okay, you guys. <laughs> but, yes, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.